From the tiny foothold taken on the beaches of Normandy in June of 1944, Allied forces have established an ironclad front across a once occupied Europe. They drove deep into enemy territory, scoring victory after victory while freeing millions of people from the clutches of tyranny. But success has not come at an easy price. Our forces moved with shocking speed, stretching supply lines thin while exhaustion set in amongst the troops. Now, with the onset of winter, Allied command has been forced to call a halt while supply and manpower situations are worked out. To alleviate pressure elsewhere, the rugged, forested Ardennes region in eastern Belgium offers a sleepy front, able to be held by new recruits and battle-weary troops as they find some rest before the assault on the German homeland begins. On the 16th of December, 1944, a massive artillery barrage caught Allied forces off guard, signaling the start of an unexpected German counteroffensive in the quiet Ardennes forests. Their intention split the Allied lines in half and ultimately claim the valuable harbor at Antwerp. Their timing is impeccable. With the cold winds of winter blowing in, our superior air forces have been grounded and the Germans are taking full advantage of the situation. Two full panzer divisions hit the weakly defended Losine Gap along a 45-mile front, driving deep into Belgium and Luxembourg. Within 24 hours of the Germans unleashing their desperate offensive, the initiative in the battle for Europe completely changed hands. The 5th Panzer Division attacked Bastogne and St. Viet, aiming to capture these strategic road junctions and secure their hold on the region. U.S. forces now scramble to stem the tide of Germans pouring into Allied territory. Though our lines may have bent, our men will not break. The German offensive will be turned back. German counteroffensive has been swift and deadly. Pouring into the Ardennes, the enemy drove our boys from the twin towns of Rockerat, Krinkelt, all the way back to Elsenborn Ridge. It is here that we've drawn a line in the sand. With poor weather hampering air support, our men are now relying on heavy artillery and grit. They are all that keeps the Germans from pushing further into the Ardennes. The Germans have Bastogne surrounded. The men in there are really taking a beating. We can't get anything in or out. The Krauts won't let us, and neither will this damn weather. But that could be a good thing. If we can open up a gap, use the road through Assenois, we could get fresh men in and the wounded out before the Krauts even know what hit them. So long as you keep that route clear, there's no time to waste. Every major road coming out of the Ardennes converges on one point, Bastogne, making it key to holding the region. After a prolonged siege, our boys trapped in the city are being called the battered bastards. And with good reason. They're outnumbered five to one, have no supplies, mounting casualties, and have been in battle for several days straight. In response, Allied command has mustered a relief force that is racing its way toward Bastogne to take the Germans on. Despite stiff resistance by our troops, the town of Stavelo fell before the Germans' unrelenting advance. Left behind were the town's fuel reserves, which are desperately needed by the Germans to drive their war machine forward. Now the American army has regrouped and is scrambling to retake Stavelo and deny the enemy this much-needed fuel. After a two-hour tank battle in Stumont, German armor was running on fumes and forced to pull back. No one expected a counteroffensive so soon after. German forces in the area may outnumber our troops, but their fuel shortage gives us an unforeseen advantage. 
If our boys can maintain their desperate hold on the small town's fuel reserves for long enough, the German war machine will stall. The town of Eschdorf has switched hands several times in the fight for the Ardennes. Most recently, the enemy established a strong presence in the area, transforming it into a major supply hub. With a well-equipped and experienced force guarding Eschdorf, the Germans think the area is untouchable, but they are mistaken. As we speak, our brave men are preparing a night assault on the town, aiming to cripple the German supply chain. The German war machine relies heavily on command and control. This has been no different in the Ardennes Offensive. Sources tell us that the enemy has consolidated a vast array of command structures around the town of Espelay. Should our boys make a move, any strike would undoubtedly come under the cover of night. Such action could cripple the Germans' ability to coordinate before they know what's hit them. Around the town of Uron, two bridges span the river Ur. These bridges have played a key role in the German offensive. Although our boys put up a stubborn defense, the enemy was able to capture the bridges, using them to rapidly move armor and men into Allied territory. Now it's up to the men of the U.S. forces to take back these crossings, staunching the flow of Germans into the Ardennes. When the Germans rushed into the Ardennes, they effectively split the Allied forces in half. Now, Army North and South are fighting to reconnect. Their aim is to meet in the town of Uffelis, which lies right in the middle of the German advance. In the north, the First Army has engaged the enemy in fierce battle, while their counterpart in the south rushes to join the fray. The town of St. Viet, lying on an important crossroad near the mouth of the Lossheim Gap, has become a linchpin in the Germans' desperate offensive. On December 21st, after being on the chopping block for days, our GIs were forced to pull back in the face of overwhelming enemy numbers. Our boys regrouped and retook the town, routing the enemy. They now defiantly hold on to its strategic areas, preparing for a heavy German counterattack. After a bitter defeat in the Ardennes, German forces are limping back to hide behind their defenses. Now it's time for our boys to press their hard-won advantage. Before taking the fatherland itself, Allied forces must claim the area west of the Rhine. Lying between them and their goal is the infamous Siegfried Line. Its defenders are armed to the teeth with anti-aircraft emplacements, artillery, and countless overcommando forces. Even so, our brave boys are undeterred, aiming to hit the Germans with everything they've got. In a desperate last-ditch effort, German High Command threw everything they had at the Allied Liberation Forces. Doing so proved to be a costly mistake. The staunch defenses and ruthless fighting of American troops crushed the enemy's spirit and set the stage for an Allied counterattack that would drive the German forces from the region. With the collapse of the German army in the west and the Red Army smashing into the east, it is clear that the enemy's days are numbered. All that remains is the conquest of the fatherland itself. <laughs>